Good morning, students. On behalf of Panivala Institute of Technology, again I welcome you all to the Prerana Gate class. On last class, we have discussed about PN junction diode and Zener diode. In that, we saw the theoretical part of PN junction and Zener diode, as well as the gate problems associated with it. I hope so. You have clearly understood about the PN junction diode, Zener diode gate problems, which we solved in last class. In today's class, we are going to see the theory and fabrication of integrated circuits, as well as the methods and steps involved in fabricating the ICs and the gate problems associated with this topic. Move on to the move on to the outline of this fabrication techniques. We have uh, several steps. In that, we are going to see thermal oxidation, photolithography, etching, dopant diffusion, metal evaporization, and electrical testing. So, thermal oxidation is the foremost process involved in uh, fabricating the IC. As we all know, that silicon is the dominant semiconductor used in integrated circuit processing for manufacturing the ICs, in large part due to its ability to form a tough native oxide. This oxide is used for multiple purposes in the fabrication of ICs. Diffusion barrier for selectively doping, adding impurities to silicon. And it can be used as a dielectric material for metal oxide semiconductor devices. And it can provide passivation and protection of the silicon surface. Of particular importance in semiconductor processing is cleanliness. For oxidation, cleanliness must be targeted to the molecular level. A specialized process called RCA clean is implemented before oxidation to remove. It contains organic contaminants, trace metals, and alkali ions. After cleaning with the RCA clean, Silicon wafers on silicon substrate are placed into a high temperature furnace and it will be heated between the temperature of 90 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius in the presence of oxygen or water where the following reaction will take place. Si plus O2 it will form silicon dioxide SiO2 or Si plus 2H2O it will form SiO2 plus H2 hydrogen. By controlling temperature and oxidation time precisely, oxide thickness can be predicted and controlled accurately. The next process in, involved in IC fabrication is photolithography and etching. After oxidation, the silicon wafer is completely covered with silicon dioxide. Just now we saw with the equation part. SA plus O2, it will give SiO2. This oxide will prevent dopant from reaching the underlying silicon wafer. In order to create integrated circuits, the silicon wafer must be doped with impurities to increase the concentration of the charge carriers. This already we saw in the last PN junction diode class. This is also accomplished by removing the oxide in specific areas so the dopants are allowed to diffuse into the exposed silicon. Selective removal of the oxide is performed using ultraviolet sensitive photoresist to coat the wafer, an alignment or illumination system to expose the PR, a mask with a desired circuit pattern that only allows the ultraviolet light to be transmitted in the shape of the circuit pattern. It has been provided with an acid to etch the oxide through openings created in the PR mask, photoresistive mask by photolithography process. Photolithography is very much like taking a picture. The photoresist film is coated with wafer, it is called as the film. Mask aligner or stepper will be acts as a camera. Mask or reticle will be the subject of the picture. But photo, photolithography is binary, either the film is exposed or not exposed, there are no shades of grayscale images. 
mask are reticle the mask is transparent plate of fused silica which is shown in the figure with an optically opaque film applied to one surface a detailed layout of the circuit is created using computer aided design software and this pattern is etched into the opaque film the etched film on the mask creates the hard copy of the circuit pattern the mask or reticle is then used to transmit ultraviolet light in the pattern of the circuit the photoresist application photoresist an organic polymer sensitive to ultraviolet light and resistant to attack by acids it is applied to the oxidized wafer using a photoresist spinner this process uses centrifugal force from high speed rotation of the wafer the photoresist is applied as a small puddle in the center of the wafer when the wafer spins the photoresist spreads out over the wafer during to due to centrifugal force after spinning a uniform layer of photoresist remains on the surface alignment and exposure the photoresist now coated wafer is placed into a system which allows the mask to be aligned to the wafer after alignment the system opens a shutter to allow uv light to illuminate the photoresist through the mask for a controlled period of the time now the photoresist which is exposed to uv light undergoes a photochemical reaction to make the photoresist more acidic next development after the wafer is exposed to ultraviolet light through the mask the acidic regions of photoresist are removed by dipping the wafer into an alkaline solution the acidic photoresist reacts chemically with the basic developer to form wafer soluble salts that results in the developer at this point the mask image can be seen in the photoresist remember that the photoresist was illuminated with the uv light through the mask so only light in the shape of the circuit reaches the photoresist the rest of the photoresist will not change the next process involved in the fabrication of ic is etching the previous steps produced a pattern in the photoresist layer coated with the oxidized wafer this patternized photoresist will be used for selectively etching the oxide areas that are exposed the patterned photoresist coated wafer is placed into a hydrofluoric acid to remove the exposed oxide so the exposed oxide on the outer surface will be removed by dipping into the hydrofluoric acid the hydrofluoric acid will react chemically with the oxide to form water soluble products that dissolves in the water used to dilute the acid when the oxide is etched away the silicon beneath the oxide can be seen fortunately the hydrofluoric does not react with, react with silicon this is ideal the hydrofluoric is selective with regards to the two materials present on the wafer then the photoresist is removed leaving a permanent pattern etched into the oxide next dopant diffusion silicon is a columns four element in the periodic table this means that there are four electrons in the outermost shell of the atom it is these electrons that are used when bonding to other at atoms when bonding to other atoms in a wafer each silicon atom bonds will form a covalent band with other four silicon atoms so an intrinsic silicon that is pure form of silicon wafer all the electrons in the outer shell are part of a bond they are stuck between the bonded silicon atoms a strong covalent bond will be exist between 
to silicon material in order for current to flow in a material there must be loose electrons but all the electrons loose electrons in the sense it's free electrons to conduct the flow of current but all the electrons in silicons are tightly hold the atoms together which means that it's not a good conductor of current because as there are no free electrons so it is not subjectable to conduct the current the electrons are tightly hold with the atoms in a silicon so what can be done to allow the silicon to conduct current more easily the free carriers of current must be added the goal is to find an element about the same size as that of silicon atom so that it fits together well within the silicon but with more free electrons in its outer shell in the periodic table the closer elements are to each other the more similar they are so the best candidate would come from column 5 the element closest to silicon in column 5 is phosphorus if phosphorus is inserted into the silicon wafer in a certain way it will take the place of a silicon atom and bond with its four neighbor silicon atoms after bonding phosphorus has an electron left over that is not bonded to a silicon atom it turns out this extra electron is not strongly held by the phosphorus atom anymore so it can be removed easily and it tend to free tend to move freely now this electron that becomes a carrier for current as i said it's a free electron so it can tend to flow the conduction of current it is free to move around the wafer so the conductivity of the silicon wafer increases this type of silicon doped with phosphorus is called an n type semiconductor because now see in silicon we have four atoms phosphorus is the phi atom element so when phosphorus is being bonded with the silicon the four electrons or four atoms of phosphorus will be forming a covalent bond with the silicon remaining one atom of phosphorus will be tend to move freely so that will constitute the flow of current with the help of the free electron extending this idea of inserting an element with a different number of valence electrons a column 3 element such as boron could be added to the silicon wafer now see boron is a three atom element if it has been bonded with the silicon silicon has four electrons so three of the boron shell will be occupied with the silicon and one will be remo- remaining the free so in that case a hole will be created which will be acts as a positively charged that will be tend to a p type semiconductor so by adding impurities to the silicon the concentration of the charge carrier will be increased so automatically the conductivity flow will be increased this conductivity can be adjusted by the amount of adding in impurities as you all know it in the last class itself i said the process of adding impurities is called as the doping when n type silicon comes into contact with p type silicon an inbuilt potential voltage develop that must be overcome before a current can flow from the n type to p type regions as carrier are being able to move only across a flat surface or down a slope the inbuilt potential is a hill that the carrier cannot go up so in order for the carrier to keep moving the low part must be pushed up to be level or higher than the top of the hill in the case of an n type or p type junction the energy to push up the low side comes in the form of voltage applied to the wafer the voltage is used to push up the ground on the low side of the hill before current flows from n type to p type regions the charge carriers has to cross over the potential barrier hill so that's the theory behind here but if the voltage is reversed the energy is used to push the low side lower while keeping the high side at the same height this means the carrier probably won't ever make it up the higher hill so it is stuck no current will flows out so when n type silicon is brought into contact with p type silicon 
a pn junction will be formed current can flow in only one direction this is the fundamental semiconductor device a pn junction diode a one way switch for current the device used in the integrated circuits are specialized combination of pn junctions the junctions are formed by adding an impurity atoms from column 3 and column 5 of the periodic table into the silicon wafer through the process of diffusion the goal of the dopant pre deposition diffusion is to move dopant atom from a source to the wafer and then allow the dopant to diffuse into the wafer the source of dopant can be in several forms can be a solid or gas in order for the dopant to move into the silicon they must be given energy usually in the form of heat it will be in the range of 900 degrees celsius to 1200 degrees celsius at this temperature the dopant reacts with the exposed silicon surface to form a highly doped glass it is from this glass that the dopant can then diffuse into the wafer after the pre deposition diffusion the dopants are situated close to the surface of the wafer however they must diffuse even farther to the lower the overall concentration in order for some of the devices to work properly the first pre deposition introduces dopant into the wafer the second diffusion redistributes the dopant and allow the dopant to diffuse into the wafer more deeply in addition oxygen and water vapor are introduced during the dry diffusion to grow a new oxide over the areas where exposed to bare silicon during the photolithography process this new oxide can be patterned again so that other selective diffusion process can be performed to create other type of devices so at this point the process of oxidation photolithography etching diffusion can be repeated to produce the various types of electronic devices required for a circuit so this is the this image will depict the phosphorus diffusion photolithographic mask etching and phosphorus pre deposition as well as gate oxide formation photolithographic mask re etching process and gate oxidation this is for providing an electrical contact via holes to the silicon it has been provided with mask for photolithographic mask for and etching process and the last one will be depositing the metal layer with the help of photolithography mask 5 and the last one will be the metallization after all after all diffusion and oxidation steps are completed metal will be deposited onto the surface of the wafer this metal is used to wire the devices fabricated in the silicon together the wafers are put to into a large chamber and the air is pumped out of the system a piece of aluminum located on a tungsten board in the system is heated to high temperature causing the aluminum to melt and evaporate the evaporated aluminum will solidify solidify into a thin film when it touches the silicon wafer after metallization the wafer is completely covered by the aluminum then it must be patterned and etched to form the actual wires connecting individual devices into a circuit and this image depicts the completed wafer structure with the, all the ic fabrication process and finally testing after the ic is being fabricated it has been tested under various conditions to check the function and operation of the ic the device fabricated are extremely small in the size of 1 micrometer so a specialized probes are been carried out to make electrical contact once contact is made several different instruments are used to measure the electrical performance that's all about uh, theoretical part of this ic fabrication methods next we move on to the gate practice questions based on this topic i hope so you have clearly understood about the theoretical part of uh, ic fabrications which involves various process oxidation thermal oxidation deposition 
etching, photolithographic process, masking, metallization, and finally testing. Now move on to the gate practice questions. On this fabrication of IC, look into the first question. The process involved in photolithography is options are making of a photographic mask only, photo etching, both photo etching and making of photographic mask, none of the above. So the answer is C, both photo etching and making of photographic mask. So photolithography, okay. So here photolithographic involves both the process in order. First, photolithographic mask is used for artwork and reduction. Then photo etching is for removing of oxide from the designed region. So the option B, C is the correct answer. Both photo etching and making of photographic mask is the process involved in the photolithography. Next, move on to the next question. How will be the initial artwork done for a normal IC? Consider you have taken a normal IC. How the initial artwork will be takes place? The options are smaller than the final dimension of a chip, same as that of the final dimension of the chip. Dimension means size. Larger than the final dimension of chip and none of the above. So the initial artwork has been done for a normal IC by considering larger than the final dimension of a chip. So answer C is the correct answer. Now look upon the explanation. The initial artwork of a normal IC is done at a scale several hundred times longer than the final dimensions. This is because for a tiny chip, larger the art artwork, more accurate is the final mask. So for making a very small size chip, it has to be performed with larger artwork more accurately to get the final mask, final design chip. Next. Third question. Find the area of the artwork done for a monolithic chip of area 30 milli into 30 milli. The options are 16 centimeter into 16 centimeter, 60 centimeter into 60 centimeter. 12 centimeter into 12 centimeter, 36 centimeter into 36 centimeter. Answer is D, 36 centimeter into 36 centimeter. How? The drawing are magnified by a factor 500. So 1 milli is equal to 25 micrometer. Therefore, 500 milli equal to 1.2 centimeter. In an area of 30 milli into 30 milli, the area for artwork required is equal to 30 milli into 1.2 centimeter, which is equal to 36 centimeter into 36 centimeter. So the correct answer is option D 36 centimeter into 36 centimeter because the drawing have been magnified, enlarged by a factor of 500. Next. Mylar coated with a sheet of red photographic mylar is used for artwork because the options are it is used to get a colorful layout. It can be easily peeled off from layout. It is recommended color for layout. It is used for highlighting layout. The answer is B. It can be easily peeled off from layout. Mylar coated with a sheet of red photographic mylar is used for hard work because it can be easily peeled off from layout. Explanation. For photographic purpose, the artwork should not contain any line drawing but must be of alternative clear and opaque region. The la red layer can be easily peeled off thus exposing clear areas with a knife edge from region where impurities have to be separated out. Next. Find the coating material used for photo etching process along with its thickness. The options are Kodak photo, photo resist in the range of 5000 to 10,000 Armstrong. Kodak photo resist in the range of 1000 to 5000 Armstrong. Kodak photo etchant 1000 to 5000 Armstrong. Kodak photo etchant 500 to 1000 Armstrong. The answer is A. 
5000 to 10000 nanostrand the coating material is kodak photo resist it is a photo sensitive emulsion film coated on wafer to remove the oxide from the silicon dioxide from the desired region so it must emphasize kodak photo resist in the range of 5000 to 10000 armstrong which type of etching process is preferred to make the photo resist immune to etchants none of the mentioned options or none of the mentioned wet etching plasma etching and chemical etching the answer is c plasma etching because the plasma etching is also called as dry etching the major advantage of dry etching process is it is possible to achieve smaller line openings less than 1 micrometer compared to other process so plasma etching is the etching process prefer to make the photo resist immune to etchants which of the following statement is not true x ray and electron beam lithographic techniques produce device dimensions down to sub micron range ultraviolet lithography has limitation due to diffraction effects of wavelength the cost of x ray or electron beam is less compared to ultraviolet photo lithography the exposure time is less in ultraviolet compared to x ray or electron beam lithography the answer is c the cost of x ray or electron beam is less compared to ultraviolet photo lithography the cost of x ray or electron beam is very high and thus it is an expensive process therefore it is used only when very less electron beam is involved compared to the ultraviolet photo lithography we want to the next question for photographic purpose usually coordinatograph is preferred for artwork because the options are it is a precision drafting machine cutting it head can be positioned accurately it can be moved up along two perpendicular axes all of the mention the options are all of the mention so the correct answer is d all of the mention the coordinatograph is a drafting machine that outlines the pattern cutting through the red mylar without damaging the clear layer underneath so all the options are correct for this question which of the following is added as an impurity to p type material in diffusion process phosphorus pentoxide p2o5 phosphorus oxychloride pocl3 boron oxide b2o3 and none of the above the options are the correct option is c boron oxide b2o3 boron is a p type material whereas phosphorus is an n type material so boron oxide has been used as an impurity to p type material in an diffusion process next in the fabrication of monolithic ics boron chloride is added as an impurity in the diffusion process find the diffusion time if the furnace is heated up to 1200 degrees celsius the options are 1 hour 2 hours 45 minutes and 30 minutes the correct answer is b that is 2 hours in diffusion process the depth of diffusion of impurities depends upon the time taken for diffusion which normally extends for more than 2 hours so the depth of diffusion of impurities will depends upon the time taken for diffusion so it's normally greater than that of 2 hours so obviously the option is 2 hours which component is not used as an impurity in diffusion process the options are phosphorus boron chloride phosphorus pentoxide and boron oxide the correct answer is option a which is nothing but phosphorus so the element uh, form of phosphorus is not added directly as an impurity in the diffusion process so phosphorus is a pentavalent so it will not be used as a direct element in the as a impurity in the diffusion process 
In ion implantation method, penetrating the ions into the silicon wafer depends upon options are accelerating voltage, accelerating speed, accelerating current, all the above. The correct answer is option A, accelerating voltage. So in ion implantation method, the depth of penetrating ions into the silicon wafer will depend upon accelerating voltage. The depth of penetration of any particular type of ion increases with the increasing of the accelerator voltage. So the correct answer is accelerating voltage. What is the advantage of using ion implantation process? The options are lateral spreading is more performed at high temperature, beam current controlled from outside performed at low temperature. The answer is C, beam current control from outside. I'll see you the explanation. In diffusion process, the temperature has to be controlled over a large area inside the oven. Whereas in ion implantation technique, acceleration potential and the beam current are electrically controlled from outside. Next, we moved on to the questions on the topic active and passive components of IC1. Which is the most striking feature in monolithic integrated circuit transistor? Here the options are collector contact is present at the bottom of IC, collector contact is present at the top of the IC, collector contact is absent, collector contact is present on one of the sides of IC. The correct answer is B, which is nothing but collector contact is present at the top of IC. Now look upon the explanation. In IC transistor, the collector contact has to be taken from the top because collector is isolated from the substrate and next isolation island by reverse bias diodes. So the collector contact is present at the top of the IC is the correct answer. Next. Why monolithic IC transistor is preferred over discrete planar epitaxial transistor? The options are due to the difference in the structure, increase in the VCE saturation voltage and collector series resistor, improvement in the circuit performance, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. Now see the explanation. As the collector contact is present on the top of the IC transistor, just now we saw it on the previous question, it makes structural difference. Hence, it increases collector series resistance and VC sat of the device. From this circuit, the circuit performance is highly improved as match transistor can be trained out. Next. Name the process that is used to overcome the increase in collector series resistance, which occurs due to the presence of collector contact at the top of the integrated transistor. The options are buried N plus layer, buried P plus layer, triple diffused layer, buried epitaxial layer. The correct answer is option A, buried N plus layer. The value of the collector series resistance of an integrated transistor can be easily reduced by a process known as buried layer or buried N plus layer. So the option buried N plus layer is the correct answer for this question. Next. What is the reason for using lateral PNP transistor in integrated circuits? It requires simple process control. The options are requires simple process control, simultaneous fabrication of PNP and NPN transistors, provide good isolation, miniaturization, and cost reduction. The answer is B, simultaneous fabrication of PNP and NPN transistor. Now look upon the explanation. During the P-type based diffusion for NPN transistor, Two adjacent P regions are diffused to form the emitter and collector region of the lateral PNP transistor. 
Thus, PNP and NPN transistor are fabric fabricated simultaneously, and that's the reason for using lateral PNP transistor in integrated circuits. Next, which of the following transistor has the limitation due to the requirement of additional fabrication steps and design consideration? The options are vertical PNP transistor. lateral pnp transistor triple diffused pnp transistor and substrate pnp transistor the correct answer is c triple diffused pnp transistor the explanation is in triple diffused pnp transistor fabrication process an extra p type diffusion is added to to a standard npn transistor after the end diffusion to obtain a pnp transistor however the usefulness of such a structure is not used due to its limitation next the buried layer reduces collector series resistance by providing the options are a low resistivity current path from n type layer to n plus contact layer a low resistivity current path from p type layer to n plus contact layer a high resistivity current path from n type layer to n plus contact layer a high resistivity current path from p type layer to n plus contact layer the correct answer is a low resistivity current path from n type layer to n plus contact layer a heavily doped n plus region is sandwiched between the n type epitaxial collector and p type substrate so a heavily doped impurity uh, impurities doped n plus region is being sandwiched that is it lies between the n type epitaxial collector and p type substrate this buried n plus region will provide a low resistivity current path from active collector region to the collector contact in effect the n plus layer shunt n layer of collector regions with respect to the flow of current thus effectively reduces the resistance of the collector next at what potential the substrate of a vertical pnp transistor should be kept to attain good isolation the options are same potential positive potential different potential negative potential the correct answer is negative potential the limitation of vertical pnp transistor is that collector has to be held at a fixed negative potential as substrate is to be held at the most negative potential in the circuit for providing good isolation so the substrate has to be held at the negative potential in order to provide a circuit for good isolation move on to the next question which method is used in the fabrication of pnp transistor the options are vertical substrate pnp triple diffused pnp lateral pnp all of the above the correct answer is option d all of the above why means as the pnp transistors in integrated circuits are fabricated in any one of the following three ways mentioned in the above three options next state the correct reason for neglecting pnp transistor why we are neglecting pnp transistor what is the reason behind that the options are an increase in the series collector resistance of pnp transistor parasitic capacitance appears between collector and substrate the current gain of pnp transistors as low as 1.5 to 30 none of the above the correct answer is option c current gain of pnp transistors as low as 5 to 1.5 to 30 milliampere the explanation is lateral pnp transistor has inferior characteristics as the base width is usually larger controlled by later diffusion of p type impurities and photographic limitations during mask marking and alignment therefore pnp transistor normally gives current gain as low as 1.5 to 30 compared to 50 to 300 for the npn transistor next 
the diffusion of collector impurities in npn transistor should be small because the options are no additional diffusion or masking steps required bandwidth is controlled by lateral diffusion of p type impurity collector need not be kept at negative potential none of the above the correct answer is option d none of the above explanation is generally n type impurities will have smaller diffusion constant than p type impurities the n type collector moves very little while p type will moves appreciably therefore the diffusion coefficient of the collector impurity should be as small as possible to avoid the movement of the collector junction the n type impurities will have smaller diffusion constant compared to the p type impurities n type collector will move very little while p type will move appreciably to the greater extent therefore the diffusion coefficient of the collector impurity should be as small as possible to avoid the movement of the collector junction next the advantages of multi emitter transistor is the options are to reduce the fabrication steps to save chip area to lower the design concentration or to provide linear output the correct answer is option b to save chip area in multi emitter transistor n plus emitter is diffused at three places in the p type base thus it is possible to save the chip area and the enhanced component density of an ic next which transistor is best suitable to achieve very fast switching in digital circuits the options are lateral pnp transistor short key transistor multi emitter transistor and npn transistor the correct answer is option b short key transistor fast switching can be achieved if the transistor is prevented from entering into a saturation in short key transistor short key diodes is used to clamp between base and the collector whenever the base current increases with the saturation state the diode will conducts thus the base to collector voltage will drops to 0.4 volt less than the cut in voltage uh, equal to 0.5 and the transistor does not enters into the saturation state next choose the appropriate value of diode to get a speedy diode from the given values of a storage time in second and forward voltage n equal to 56 vy equal to 0.96 n equal to 100 vy equal to 0.92 n equal to 9 vy equal to 0.85 and n equal to 53 vy equal to 0.95 the correct answer is option c n equal to 9 vy equal to 0.85 the diode with lowest storage time and lowest forward voltage drop is useful for getting high speed diode to be used in digital integrated circuit next move on to the questions on the topic of active and passive components of ic2 how many number of leds in short key barrier diode are options are 4 3 2 and 6 the correct answer is option c that is 2 because short key barrier diode has only two contact leads namely short key barrier contact and ohmic contact so only two leads are there in short key barrier diode so the correct answer is 2 In short key barrier diode, which contact has similar characteristic to that of an ordinary PN diode? Options are ohmic contact, short key barrier contact, both ohmic and short key barrier contact, none of the above. The correct answer is option B, short key barrier contact. A metal semiconductor is formed when aluminum is deposited directly upon n-type silicon. Its characteristics is found to be same as that of the ordinary PN junction diode. how the ohmic contact is formed in metal semiconductor diode aluminum options are n plus diffusion in p region near al lead p plus diffusion in p region near aluminum lead and n plus diffusion in n region near aluminum lead p plus diffusion in n region near aluminum lead the option is c the correct option is c n plus diffusion in n region near aluminum lead aluminum is p type impurity in silicon so when it is used to make a contact with n type silicon it has essential contact as ohmic contact and no pn junction is formed therefore 
the contact is done by making n plus diffusion in the region near the surface where aluminum is deposited on to the next question which of the following is not used as metallic film in the thin film resistor nichrome tantalum stannic oxide silicon dioxide the correct answer is option d silicon dioxide silicon dioxide is a non metallic layer on which the metallic thin films are deposited i hope so all my students are following me if you have doubt you just interrupt me then and there next the flow of current in chotki barrier diode is due to the options are majority and minority carriers majority carriers minority carriers none of the above the correct answer is flow of current in chotki barrier is due to the majority carriers as we know from the previous class when the diode is being forward biased electron flow from semiconductor to the material hence the majority carrier will carry the electrons that tend to the flow of current in the short key diode next find the application areas where short key diode can be used radio frequency power rectifier clamping diode and all of the above the correct answer is all of the above short key diode can be used for ideal clamping or as a detector in high frequency microwave ic's therefore it is used for all set of applications mentioned above next which of the following resistor is not used as an integrated resistor the options are polygate resistor pinched resistor epitaxial resistor thin film resistor the correct answer is polygate resistor except polygate resistor all other resistors are used as an integrated resistor which of the following is not true about diffused resistor the options are limitation due to small range of resistance resistance depends upon surface geometry resistance depends on diffusion characteristics of material diffused resistors are non economical the correct answer is option d diffused resistors are non economical in diffused resistor method the resistors are very economical as no extra fabrication steps are required next determine the formula for the sheet resistance the options are r into l into w r into l into rho by w r into w by l r into w into rho by l the correct answer is option c r into w by l the formula for sheet resistance of a material of surface dimension l and width is rs is equal to r into w by l consider a 52 cm to 52 cm material of uniform resistivity 100 ohm meter and thickness 3 cm find the area and resistance of this sheet of material options are 16 m square 1.923 ohm per square 8112 cm square 1.733 ohm per square 156 cm square 33.33 ohm per square 901 cm square 3.333 ohm per square correct answer is 156 cm square 33.33 ohm per square now look upon the expression area is equal to l into t 52 cm into the thickness is 3 cm which is equal to 156 cm square sheet resistance rs is equal to p rho into l divided by l into t l and l will get cancelled it is rho by t rho here given as uh, 100 ohm meter specific resistivity by time as uh, 3 milliseconds so which is equal to 33.33 ohm per square next if a 25 ohm diffused resistor is to be designed for an emitter resistor determine the pattern in which it is fabricated 20 milli long by 5 milli wide 25 milli long by 1 milli wide 5 milli long by 1 milli wide 60 milli long by 4 milli wide the correct answer is 25 milli long by 1 milli wide the sheet sheet resistance of n type diffused resistor is 5 ohm per square milli square so l by w equal to r by rs it's about 25 ohm by 5 ohm equal to 5 by 1 5 milli long by 1 milli wide the number of square contained in the integrated resistor by diffused resistor method depends on the ratio of rho by t rho into l by w w by l into t l by w answer is l by w the number of square contained in the resistor depends upon the surface geometry 
so which is given by the ratio l by w is called as aspect ratio of surface geometry next the problem on thin film and thick film technology when does an integrated circuit exhibit greater degree of freedom and electrical performance options are thin and thick film technology in semiconductor technology in semiconductor and film technology in thick film technology only correct answer is both the semiconductor and film technology combining film and semiconductor technology will provide a better electrical performance than either technology can provide separately now give the thickness range of the film used in thin film technology 0.5 to 2.5 mm 0.02 to 8 mm and 10 to 20 mm and 0.05 to 0.07 mm so the correct answer is 0.02 to 8 mm this is correct so thin film have thickness varying from 50 armstrong to 20000 armstrong so we know that one armstrong equal to 0.4 micromill so 50 armstrong equal to 15 to 0.4 micromill equal to 0.02 millimill 20000 armstrong equal to 20000 into 0.4 micromill equal to 8 millimill therefore thickness range from 0.02 to 8 millimeter millimill which technology is used to get cheap resistors and capacitors thick film technology thin film technology both the thick and thin film technology none of the above the option is correct answer is thin film technology thick film technology produces cheap and rugged components whereas thin film technology will provides greater precision in manufacturing but it is quite expensive the processing equipment for thick film circuit is relatively inexpensive and it is easy to use next how was the process of film deposition carried out in cathodes pottery slower than evaporation method faster than evaporation method similar to the same as evaporation method all the above the correct answer is slower than evaporation method cathodes pottery and vacuum evaporation uses identical system however the film deposition process in cathodes pottery is slower than evaporation method since depositing a micron thick film takes minute to hours compared to second to minute for evaporation next how we a uniform film with good crystal structure is attained in cathodes pottery process by heating high energy particle directly on the substrate allowing less time for the particle to deposit on the substrate high energy particle diffuses through low pressure gas and deposits on the substrate heavy inert gas is used for film deposition on the substrate the correct answer is option c high energy particle diffuses through low pressure gas and deposits on the substrate the process of cathodes pottery is performed at a low temp pressure so when the high energy particle landing on the substrate actually results in a very uniform film and adhesion which process is used to deposit metal on glass ceramic and plastic options are silk plating technique gas plating technique electroless plating technique electroplating technique option is correct option is electroless plating technique in electroless plating a metal ion is in solution is reduced to the free to the free metal and deposited to the free metal and deposited as a metallic coating without the use of a coating without the use of an electric current thus this process is used in plating on glass ceramic and plastic next Electroplating technique is suitable for making conduction film ceramic coating with considerable thickness coating without use of electric current making conduction films of gold or copper the option is making conduction film of gold or copper is the correct answer electroplating is a process of coating an object with one or more layers of different metals when dc is passed through the electrolytic solution the positive metal ions migrate from anode and deposits on the cathode substrate which of the following process is involved in thin film technology screen printing ceramic firing silk screening all the above uh, correct answer is silk screening silk silk screening is one of the process of thin film technology an ancient process used till today for production of circuit film is silk screening technique surface mount technology ceramic printing technology screen printing technique the correct answer is screen printing technique the process of screen printing pattern is an ancient one 
the egyptian used this technique thousands of years ago to decrease potter and wall of building yes. what is the advantage of using surface mount technology all the above low power consumption reduce heat dissipation in components use leaded or leadless components the option correct option is use leaded or leadless components the surface mount technology utilizes micro miniature leaded or leadless components called surface mount device which are directly soldered to the specific areas on the surface without hole also the compact size of surface mount devices reduces the area in pcb and increases the packaging packing density the last topic is we are going to discuss the practical questions on ic fabrication is fabrication of fet j fet is similar to the fabrication of options are direct fabrication bgt fabrication fet fabrication and none of the above the correct answer is bgt fabrication the basic processes used are same as that of bgt fabrication epitaxial layer is used as the end channel of j fet the p plus is formed in n channel by process of diffusion and n plus region is formed under drain and source to provide good ohmic contact what are the types of mosfet devices available the options are p type enhancement type mosfet n type enhancement type mosfet and depletion type mosfet all the above the option correct option is all the above mosfets are available as enhancement type and depletion type mosfet so these are further classified into n type and p type device which insulating layer is used in fabrication of mosfet options are aluminum oxide silicon nitride silicon dioxide and none of the above the correct answer is silicon dioxide silicon dioxide is used as insulating layer in mosfet fabrication it gives an extremely high input resistance in the order of 10 to the power 10 to the 10 to the power 15 ohm for mosfet which of the following plays an important role in improving device performance of mosfet the options are dielectric constant threshold voltage power supply voltage and gate to drain voltage the correct answer is threshold voltage in mosfet the threshold voltage is typically 3 to 6 volt this large voltage is not compatible with 5 volt supply used in digital ic so to improve device performance magnitude of the threshold voltage should be reduced a technique which is used to reduce the magnitude of threshold voltage of mosfet are options are use of complementary mosfet use of silicon nitride using thin film technology or none of the above the correct answer is use of silicon nitride why because means silicon nitride is sandwiched between two sao2 layer silicon dioxide layer and provides necessary barrier the dielectric constant of silicon nitride is 7.5 whereas that of silicon dioxide is 4 this increases in overall dielectric constant reduces the threshold voltage find the sequence of steps involved in fabrication of polysilicon gate mosfet step 1 is entire wafer surface of a si3n4 is coated and it is etched away with the help of mask to include source gate and drain step 2 is the contact areas are defined using photolithographic process step 3 is selective etching of si3n4 and tin oxide growth step 4 is deposition of polysilicon gate step 5 thick oxide growth called field oxide and p SUP plus less than uh, SUP equal to greater than implantation. Step six is metallization and interconnection between substrate and source. So the correct answer is first step one, then step five, step three, step four, then step two. At last step six, which is used to higher the speed of operation MOSFET fabrication. The options are. ceramic gate silicon dioxide silicon nitride polysilicon gate the correct answer is polysilicon gate in conventional metal gate small overlap capacitance is present 
which lowers the speed of the operation. Due to self-aligning property of polysilicon gate, it eliminates this capacitance. Next, why MOSFET is preferred over BJT in IC components? MOSFET has low packaging density, MOSFET has medium packing density, MOSFET has high packing density, and MOSFET has no packing density. The correct answer is MOSFET has high packing density. Option correct answer explanation is no isolation is required in MOSFET structure because the drain of an N MOSFET device is held with positive with respect to the source. The cutoff drain to substrate diode and the source to substrate diode will form due to the P plus region. In BJT, the isolation diffusion occupies extremely large percentage of chip area. The last question, which of the following statement is true? Fabrication of PMOS transistor requires few additional steps compared to NMOS transistor. Fabrication of NMOS transistor requires few additional steps compared to PMOS transistor. Fabrication on NMOS is same as that of PMOS transistor. Fabrication on NMOS is different from that of PMOS transistor. The correct answer is option A. Fabrication of PMOS transistor requires few additional steps compared to NMOS transistor. The explanation is, there are two additional steps that are required in the formation of PMOS transistor compared to NMOS transistor, such as the formation of N region and ion implantation of P-type source and drain regions. With this, I will wind up the class today. Hi dear students, I hope so. In today's class, you have clearly understood about the fabrication of ICs with several process involved. We saw from the right from the thermal oxidation, then etching, photolithographic masking, metallization. Finally, it ends with the testing process to verify the working operation of the IC component. Then we moved on to the gate practice question on this IC fabrication techniques. In that, under various topics, we have discussed about the multiple practice problems. I hope so. It will give you a clear idea to solve the gate problems. Thank you, my dear students. We will continue in the next class with the another topic. Thank you all.